we will today talk about, uh, uh, we talked about realism and now let us briefly take a look at what all uh, meta ethics theories that we have talked about. Now, if you look at the screen, uh, I have made uh, uh, three classification of uh, uh, meta ethics, which I have managed to scribble in, in the little space that I left for myself in red. So, these are basically three kinds of uh, uh, meta ethical foundations. Now, the first one is, uh, uh, we have talked about definist theories, they are naturalistic or metaphysical. What are their uh, criteria? Well, ought can be explained or can be understood in terms of is. Uh, values may be inferred from facts and uh, ethical terms can be understood in terms of non-ethical terms. So, uh, briefly definist theories are naturalistic and metaphysical, the ought can be understood in terms of is, values may be inferred from facts, Ethic ethical terms can be understood in terms of non-ethical terms. Now, let us simplistically try to understand, what do we mean by this. Well, uh, when I say definist theories, this is, this is uh, a whole school of theories belonging to meta ethics, and which talks about, uh, what is the foundation of um, the ethical quest. Now, um, definist theories by, um, by the term used, uh, refers to definition. So, to explain or to define a value term, we can take the help of a factual term put even more simplistically, when we talked about hedonism or utilitarianism, to define good or to understand good or right or any such ethical term, we refer to a non-ethical, factual, empirically available uh, concept like pleasure, like uh, happiness. So, these are psychological facts, these are uh, psychological states. So, uh, whenever we are trying to understand the ethical domain in terms of factual domain, we are uh, having an implicit uh, assumption of definist meta ethics. It is naturalistic or also known as metaphysical uh, meta ethics. Now, metaphysical, because uh, even say suppose, uh, we say concurrence to a religious word or a religious book or a religious claim or a religious leader, can also be understood in terms of uh, definist theory, because there the religious book is defining that this is the right thing to do, because it is the word of God, or it is the word of their leader. So, the justification is again coming from something factual or empirical. Now, uh, what further does this theory assume? This assumes that values may be inferred from facts. You remember, we sensitized ourselves, or we uh, explored the domain of values and facts, and how are they connected with each other. Now, uh, the, the naturalistic theories, that we uh, earlier talked about, claim that they can understand values in terms of facts. That they can understand uh, right, right action in uh, terms of what, uh, uh, for example, in terms of what brings about the uh, greatest happiness of the greatest number. This is an example of a naturalistic uh, uh, ethics, but it is not confined to naturalistic ethics. Utilitarianism or hedonism is a kind of naturalistic ethics, but there are other kinds of it also. So, to understand or to define value terms, we need factual terms. But let us look at an example, where uh, perhaps, why uh, 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 many places, where uh, 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 the naturalistic uh, ethicist is critiqued. Now, let us assume that, well, you are uh, standing on a road, and a car is, uh, or a vehicle is, uh, speedily coming on to you. Now, these are the facts of the case, that you are standing on a road, 
uh, a, a vehicle is speedily coming on to you, and if you do not do anything, it is most likely that it will hit you. These are facts, but from where in these facts do we get the uh, claim that, well I should move out of, I should pay attention on the word, I should move out of the uh, path of the vehicle, I should, I ought to uh, give way or I ought to jump out of the way of the vehicle. Now, this is where uh, uh, various critiques have critiqued naturalism, that well naturalism understandably gives a um, uh, domain of facts, but from the facts how is a prescription or how is a value or how is a motivation arrived at. Now, given that this is the state of uh, affairs that well a vehicle is uh, uh, rushing on to you, I ought to jump out of its way. So, this ought, this motivational should claim is a claim that comes from the agent, it is not a part of the description of the uh, scene. That once the uh, agent or the per, uh, person has jumped out of the path of the uh, vehicle that becomes a part of the description of the agent. So, what is prescription if followed becomes description, but prescription is not a part of description. A prescription executed becomes a part of description, but a prescription by itself is not a part of description. So, this is where the uh, uh, critiques of naturalism uh, argue that well, uh, naturalism as uh, a meta ethical foundation does not actually give us any norms what to do, it only describes the way things are and that is insufficient to arrive at norm. Now, if you look at this screen, what we have basically talked out is uh, um, summed up over here that well values may be inferred from facts. Now, uh, uh, non naturalistic um, theories would critique that and that ethical terms can be understood in terms of non ethical terms. Now, uh, this is what the naturalistic uh, uh, ethicist would uh, have to us have us to believe, uh, but as we see that the, uh, uh, there are many uh, gaping uh, loopholes in this theory of naturalism, but of course, uh, the truth to be arrived at is a, a vigorous journey between th uh, theories and their counter -the claims and claims and counter claims and in their synthesis. So, this is definitely that there is no one theory that is completely immune to uh, any criticism, but to be aware of a criticism is to be refined to refine the theory. So, we will leave naturalism at the moment right here and then we will move on to what is the second classification, the second kind of meta ethics, which is uh, as we see uh, intuitionism or non naturalistic theories. Let me number them. Now, the intuitionism or non naturalistic theories can be, uh, they give up on natural uh, theories and uh, psychological arguments. Uh, their basic principles and value judgments are intuitive or self evident. So, well, uh, where they differ from uh, uh, the definition theories is that values cannot be inferred from facts. Ethical terms can be under cannot be understood in terms of non ethical terms. So, what they are crucially saying is that well, ethical properties stand for the properties of things. So, in essence, their uh, claim comes out to be that well. Uh, ethical notions
are self evident notions. Just as yellowness, pleasantness, or any other fundamental question. Okay, now let us uh, explore what do we mean by these non-naturalistic theories. Uh, intuitionism is one of them. Intuitionism or non-naturalistic theories. Now, well, uh, non-naturalistic theories they are different from definitionistic theories because they are not. Um, uh, proposing to define ethical terms, in terms of non-ethical terms. In fact, on the other hand, uh, they are uh, contrary to uh, definite theories, by claiming that ethical terms cannot be understood, in terms of non-ethical terms. So, good is something fundamental. Uh, in the history of uh, uh, Western philosophy, there was a philosopher called G. E. Moore, whom we have talked about, uh, in a brief manner and the open question argument, in which uh, uh, the, the philosopher tried to show that, well, uh, the term good or the concept good is, in principle indefinable, but yet nevertheless it is not uh, uh, meaningless. Now, to define something is to reduce it into simpler parts, to more fundamental blocks. So, when I try to define uh, any complex notion, or any notion, I will try to explain it, in terms of simpler parts. Now, there is a problem with definition. There is a problem with definition, because definition assumes, that there are simpler blocks to it. There are simpler uh, components, to the term, which is in, uh, intended to be defined. So, definition is assuming that, well, what is uh, wanted, or what is going to be defined, is a complex object, and can be reduced to smaller, uh, or more fundamental blocks. Now, the uh, second uh, meta ethics uh, uh, school, or not school exactly, but the bunch of theories that we talk about, intuitionism, or non-naturalistic theories, do not subscribe to this. They have a claim, that ethical terms are fundamental, they are self-evident. What does this mean? Let us slow down. Let us say, if you want to define something uh, uh, as colour, or something as, uh, uh, say our f f five fundamental sense perceptions that we have, taste, smell, uh, touch. Now, these are fundamental to us, and cannot be further uh, simplified for us. We might be able to tell the uh, biochemistry, the physics behind the sensory uh, process that takes place, but for one to perceive a colour, there can be perhaps nothing more uh, fundamental or defining, than the very fact that one perceives colour, and that is the understanding of colour. It cannot be defined into more simpler terms. Now, these philosophers, the non-naturalistic philosophers, uh, intuitionists, claim to give this kind of a uh, position to uh, to this uh, to the uh, ethical terms. That ethical terms need not be defined, rather not need not, but cannot be defined in terms of non-ethical terms because they are by themselves unanalyzably simple. So, what they are basically is, unanalyzable and simple. So, this is what is meant by self-evident. Now, when some terms are analyze, uh, are simple and unanalyzable, they cannot be further explained, defined, or understood in terms of other notions, and therefore they are final. So many of us might have a feeling that well, all this talk of understanding ethics, what is it to understand anything? It is to break it into simple, simpler uh, notions or parts that we are familiar with. So if we are familiar with, uh, uh, say. Uh, 
uh, we talk about uh, say a triangle. A triangle, we try to understand it in terms of lines and angles, which is presumably more fundamental to triangle, because lines and angles come together, uh, dots and points come together to form a triangle. But this assumes that well, triangle is a complex entity and can be defined in terms of uh, um, simpler entities. So, there are simpler entities in terms of which it can be defined, but now when I say define the color yellow, what would you define it as? Well, many of uh, us would perhaps um, uh, say that well, it, it is defined by the wavelength or the frequency of the uh, light that produces the sensation of yellowness in us. But, the sensation of yellowness, is it the same thing as the frequency or the wavelength, which is uh, a measure, but it is not the notion of yellowness. The notion of yellowness or the notion of taste, is something that we fundamentally have. That is a part of how we encounter, approach the world. That is our framework of making sense of the world. Same thing like sweetness. Things may be more sweet, less sweet, but what is it to be sweet, depends on the agent. Right? That I know what is sweet, and cannot be further broken down into any simplers. It is a uh, simple notion, or it is a simple, as one would say. Now, ethical terms, the intuitionists and the non-naturalists claim that, have this kind of a self-evidence. That is, they are no more uh, uh, reducible, analyzable, understandable, in terms of non-ethical terms. They are simples. So, the right action and the good action, or the good of uh, an agent is a simple. It is to be known by the agent itself. We will talk about this next, uh, when we finish the classification of these three theories. We will talk about intuitionism. Now, if you come to the slide, the third theory that we talk about, is the non-descriptivist theory. So, this claims that well, ethical judgments, are not assertions or statements. Ascribing or denying properties, to actions, persons or things. So, in a way, these are uh, the non-descriptivists can claim that these are non-justifiable opinions, if we may say. Example would be emotivism that we have talked about. So, now what do the non-descriptivist on the other hand say? Well, the non-descriptivists are of the opinion, that well, as a meta-ethical foundation, that uh, ethical terms do not describe anything. They are perhaps uh, exhortations to action, they are expressions of feelings, but they are not statements. That is, they are not in the domain of truth and falsity. In uh, philosophy, as uh, particularly in logic, when we talk about statements or propositions, more accurately propositions, is a claim, made uh, in a sentence, and has, uh, which uh, can have the value of either true or false. So, a question is not a proposition. Many sentences can contain the same proposition. So, non-descriptivists are of the opinion that well, uh, there is uh, ethical claims are not pro propositions. Now, uh, we will talk about non-descriptivists in, in a few uh, in moments to come. But before that, uh, let us talk about the topic we choose to talk about today is intuitionism. Before we talk about intuitionism, let us uh, uh, take a look at what 
let us remind ourselves of the fundamental classification between consequentialism and deontology. So, the classifications were well consequentialism, it depends on the, uh, the uh, right action is determined by the good consequences. to be brought about. And deontology on the other hand claims that well, uh, the right action is independent of the consequences that it brings about. So, basically the question that they are asking is that, and they, these two theories are answers to the same question, only different answers to the same question. The question being that, how is the right related to the good. Now, if consequentialists would answer that well, the right is wholly determined by the good, R is wholly determined by the good. Whereas, the consequent, uh, the deontologists would say that well, R or the right is independent of the good. Now, this is basically we worked out uh, or uh, brought back the classification between uh, consequentialism and deontology. Now, intuitionism is a form of deontology. is a form of deontological ethics. Uh, now, let us just uh, explore that, well we have talked about deontological ethics before, and uh, what does uh, intuitionism uh, say about that. Well, the intuition comes from the word, uh, intuitionism naturally evidently comes from the word uh, intuition which perhaps most of us would understand as almost some uh, uh, mysterious way of knowing, of intuiting or some, uh, even if we not, uh, do not term it mysterious, but as something which is uh, scientifically undemonstrable uh, way of uh, knowing what is uh, uh, intuitionism or uh, what is uh, the solution to it. Now, uh, unfortunately, there are a lot of uh, uh, misconceptions about intuitionism that make it seem to be much more mysterious than what it actually is. So, let us just have a brief talk about intuitionism, what is meant by uh, intuitionism. Now, the intuitionists uh, are uh, uh, a part of the non naturalistic claim, which uh, non naturalistic meta ethics, which claim that well, uh, moral. Uh, terms or ethical terms are self evident. Now, what does, what do they mean, when they say that it is self evident? Uh, is it that, by some uh, mysterious way, we come to know whether this is the right thing to do, or that is uh, not the right thing to do, or how do we decide on an action. We come to know by intuition, and in a way then, there is no theorizing at all. It is just a matter of uh, your intuition, what perhaps the emotivists call feeling the intuition is called intuition. This is incorrect. Intuitionists are uh, 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 need a, uh, or deserve a little more attention that perhaps, uh, uh, the history of philosophy has uh, uh, given to them. Now, the intuitionists make a claim that, uh, 
uh, moral facts are self evident. They are self evident in, uh, in a way that we do not uh, arrive at it from an algorithm. So, let us uh, let's, uh, put it down. Let us say, uh, ethical terms cannot be understood in terms of non-ethical terms. Um, ethical terms are or ethical notions are self evident. Now, this is a portion that we would require certain clarification before we can uh, truly uh, evaluate or assess the meaning of self evidence in terms of ethical notions. So, ethical terms cannot be understood in terms of uh, non ethical terms, ethical notions are self evident and what we would like to say is that, well, it is still a matter of theorizing. Now, the preliminary instance, uh, um, let me say, why do I make this claim, that uh, is intuitionism a matter of moral theorizing. Now, if you take a, uh, let us take, uh, let us imagine, if uh, intuitionism is uh, uh, claiming that, well, uh, moral truths are self evident, that they are not algorithmic. That, if you take a look at this slide, that, well, moral reasoning is not blind, dead, algorithms. Now, when, uh, when I say that, well, uh, moral uh, uh, notions are not blind dead algorithms, perhaps I can best explain it first, as an example, in terms of uh, two very essential, two very, very uh, uh, notions essential to law. Well, let us postulate, let me put forth a question to you. Can we imagine something called, and uh, let us let's term it, uh, an A J M, right, on the lines of A T M, which is an automatic judging machine, to be used in law courts, in place of judges. Now, this is the thought experiment, that I am, I would like you to focus on. That, let us uh, look at the screen, and say that, well, the automatic judging machine, or AJM, is to be used in law courts, in place of judges. Now, is that feasible? Now, uh, think over it. Now, would you find this to be feasible? Let us say, uh, 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 India has a whole uh, battery of law cases pending, and there is tremendous of pressure on the uh, legal system. There is insufficient manpower, and it takes a lot of time, and court cases prolong. So, we would like it to be uh, shortened, we would like it to be more efficient. Let us design, let us ask the engineers, to design this A J M, an automatic judging machine. Now, this automatic judging machine will be a very, of course, a very powerful computer, which will know all the law cases, that are, uh, that have taken place, will be familiar with all the relevant codes of, uh, of uh, uh, the constitution, of the legal acts to be abided by, will also be, uh, will have uh, an excellent memory of uh, precedences and all such claims. Now, do these, uh, 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 can we ask, can the law uh, uh, minister, or the law ministry ask, uh, 
the engineers to build such a machine, or would he be, well, making a fool of himself, or would he not even dare to ask such a question, or is this a wrong question. That is, what most of us would think that, well, of course, it is a wrong question. I mean, how can you have an automated, automatic uh, judging machine, or an automatic telling machine, we can understand somebody that is something that, some machine that dispenses money, some uh, machine that does a lot of calculations, some that, that even uh, human beings cannot do, and so on and so forth. But, having an automatic judging machine, what does that mean? Well, let me explain. As we, as we keep talking, we will come to know the perspective of the intuitionists. Well, why do we think there cannot be an automatic judging machine? If at all we think so, and probably many of you would be thinking that, well, there cannot be an automatic judging machine to replace the um, uh, wise old uh, 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 judge with the wig on, that there is something about uh, a judge's job, that cannot be seen in terms of algorithms. Because, when we are proposing an automatic judging machine, what are we saying? We are trying to understand that, well, what does a bank teller do? A bank teller does something, which is uh, to put simplistically, which can be made algorithmic or mechanical. That well, uh, you present a check, uh, she sees what is the balance in your account, verifies whether this account is yours, by telling the signature, makes a deduction in the account, gives you that relevant money. Now, this was what the teller did, one of the many things that the teller did. Now, engineers could design a machine, that could do the same thing. Now, it identifies uh, you, with uh, uh, your ATM card, and the pin that you enter. It has direct access to your uh, bank balance. So, it verifies that you have the same bank balance, and accordingly, it error proofly counts the notes, and uh, dispatches it, or uh, releases it in the ATM counter. Now, this is what happened, when the teller became automated. So, there was no more a person to do that job. Now, can the judge's job, be automated in such a manner, it would be countless benefits for it to happen. If many of you, or if you are one of them, who are not comfortable with such an idea, or who would further say that, such a thing is not possible. Well, are, then you are coming close to the intuitionist claim. Now, let us imagine, what does a, uh, take a look at, what does happen in a court case. Well, the first thing, uh, we start with is, uh, evidence. Then, there is uh, arguments, uh, postulations. testimonies, feasibility, let us assume this all against uh, reasoning, or argumentation, to finally have the verdict. Now, simplistically put, this is the uh, basic format of what happens in a court case, right? How does one arrive from the evidence to the verdict? Now, evidence is something which we can perhaps equal it with natural facts. They are empirical; they ought to be demonstrable, or they ought to be provable. That and it is something that perhaps even a machine or an algorithm can detect. Now, from these facts, how do you make a judgment? Now, if we can arrive from natural, is this a process of, is this an algorithm? The intuitionists answer, No, 
that this is not an algorithm. And because it is not an algorithm, so we always need the human element here. So, how to assess and evaluate? How to assess and evaluate the evidence to reach the verdict? Now, this is a, a philosopher called uh, Lake, Patton Lake, uh, Philip Stratton, sorry, the philosopher called Philip Stratton Lake is credited with giving this analogy of. Uh, between evidence and verdict. Now, having known the evidence, can we reach a verdict? We do reach a verdict, but can a machine reach a verdict? So, when the intuitionists say that, well, uh, certain moral uh, fact or moral claims or moral uh, concepts are self-evident and cannot be explained in terms of non-ethical terms or factual terms or empirical terms or what surrounds us all, then we are making a uh, self uh, case of self evidence, a case of judgement from uh, self evidence. Now, how does the judge make this co uh, case at all? How does the judge uh, uh, bring forth a verdict at all? Is it out of a concoction? It is, how, how does uh, the judge concoct a verdict, if at all he does it? or she does it. Now, this is where the uh, intuitionists come in. Their claim is that, well, a verdict is not, can or cannot be algorithmically related to the evidence. And there is where the human element, the uh, what uh, critics have criticized as the mysterious element in arriving at the assessment, the weightage given to which evidence is required to come uh, arrive at judgment. So, it is uh, perhaps, uh, to put it in a jocular vein, uh, the final bastion, uh, human bastion that resists mechanization. Of course, that would uh, 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 be a, 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 a cliched way of putting the uh, notion. But well, in essence, the intuitionists are of this claim that well, when we talk about self-evidence, it is not about any magical, mysterious self-evidence. But because moral terms are so simple and unanalyzably uh, and thereof human, that well, we require uh, a human being to judge, not a, uh, uh, not possibly a machine, because a machine represents algorithm. And if this cannot be put in the terms of an algorithm, we cannot judge the same. So, when intuitionists are making a claim that it is uh, self-evidence, what they mean is that, well, uh, no matter how the evidence is presented, to assess the evidence, we have to have a, uh, the, uh, the human uh, agency is intervention, to arrive at what is self evidence notion of truth, uh, moral truth and thereof make a judgement. So, this is simplistically put, what is uh, meant by the self evidence term used by intuitionists. Now, let us, uh, we have earlier talked about a philosopher called W. D. Ross. Now, W. D. Ross was an example of intuition, uh, uh, of an intuitionist. Well, Ross put forth uh, in our earlier talks, uh, in, when we talked about moral theories, not meta ethics, we talked about uh, Ross philosophy. And we can go back to the earlier lectures to talk about this. This was the philosopher that we talked about, and he talked about something called the prima facie duties. So, let me just briefly uh, uh, tell you in two sentences about what uh, uh, Ross claim was that. Ross is a non-naturalistic intuitionist philosopher. So, Ross claim is that, well, there are certain set of, any situation presents a certain set of prima facie duties, duties of uh, non-malevolence, duties of uh, uh, reparation. So, he puts out a, a, force, uh, a list of uh, six to seven duties, 
which are prima facie duties. But what makes these prima facie duties, actual duties is the human element. Now, that there are various kinds of duties, which are fundamental, but well, sometimes uh, say it is uh, a duty to be, uh, 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 where is the moral dilemma? The moral dilemma comes, when there is a conflict between two duties, or two or more duties. So, when I say that, well, uh, I would like to be non-violent, and I would like to be truthful, but I see that, well, uh, there are numerous imaginable cases, where uh, I would have to sacrifice one, to hold on to the other. So, and in which situation, can I sacrifice one, and hold on to the other. So, Ross puts forth these sets of duties, but again puts the final ball in the human agent's court, that depending on the circumstances, uh, uh, the agent in concern, has to make a question, and evaluate and assess, the various factors, uh, 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 around the decision, around the a moral dilemma, to take a final call. So, sometimes, I would uh, say the conflict, that we talked about, between uh, being honest, and being uh, uh, non-violent. Now, sometimes, if I have to be, uh, let us imagine the classic Platonic case, that well, uh, a friend has loaned you a firearm, and has gone on a voyage, comes back uh, insane. But, because you are an honest person, you would like to. Uh, return, uh, what was given to you, for safe keeping. But, you are also a non-violent uh, person, or you want to propagate non-violence. So, you know that this friend of yours, who went for the voyage, is now insane, and would perhaps take the weapon, and uh, cause harm to others, or to himself. Now, here you clearly have a, uh, a, a contradiction between two duties. So, you would have to decide. So, that is why Ross leaves that decision, that well. The standard deontologist, tries to work out a dead, blind uh, algorithm, to give an, uh, 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 a solution, to every moral dilemma. The intuitionist, on the other hand, leaves that much of space, because uh, of the uh, uh, claim of the intuitionist, that well, this final space, cannot be algorithmized. And it needs a human agent, to observe. Uh, the evidence, the what the situation, that the moral dilemma presents, and then take the decision. There cannot be a moral calculator, or a moral positioning system, in lines of the global positioning system, to give a mechanical answer to uh, the question. So, that is a question, that the agent has to think over, uh, assess for himself or herself, and decide. And that is where, that is perhaps more, uh, the case, how most of us go through life. So, that makes a case for self-evidence of uh, the final step of moral decision making. So, in simplistically put, intuitionism is not as mysterious as we uh, believe it to be, or as we as it is reputed to be. So, we try to bring about a um, balance between um, an algorithmic uh, assessment of the situation and a final moral claim that is to come from. Uh, the human agent, from assessing the weightages. That is the uh, self-evident, or the irreducible part of the decision-making procedure.